This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. All right, here's the next exciting problem we're going to do, solving an equation with fractions. And remember, to eliminate fractions, you can multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. So I'm just going to write what I'm going to multiply both sides by. So I'm putting parentheses around the whole equation. And we have to look at all the denominators here. We have 4, 6, 12, 6. So we have to determine the least common denominator there, and that would be 12. So we multiply 12 times each term on both sides of the equation, because remember, you can't just multiply 12 by one side of the equation. You have to multiply it on both sides of the equation. So 12 times x over 12 plus and the 12 times 11 6. So I've multiplied both sides of the equation by 12 by multiplying every term on both sides by 12. And now's the fun part. We get to cancel. 4 goes into 12 3. 6 goes into 12 2. 12 goes into 12 once. 6 goes into 12, 2, and of course all these are 1's, right? That's the whole point. We don't want to have any denominators anymore. Sometimes this is called clearing the denominator, clearing fractions, eliminating fractions. All basically means the same thing. So I have 3 times 3x for this first term, 9x. 2 times 1 is just 2. This is 1 times x, which is x. And 2 times 11 is, whoops, that's not an equal sign, that's a plus, 22. And now we have an equation without fractions. And it's not a very hard equation. So let's see, we're going to subtract x from both sides. And we'll add 2 so that we have the variables on the left side and the constants on the right. So 9x minus 1x is 8x. 22 plus 2 is 24. This is coming out very nicely. X equals 3. That symbol I write here means implies. So X equals 3 means the solution set, if I did this correctly, is 3. Now we got to make sure we did it correctly, and that's why we always check our answers. All right, so we're going to check that 3 is the correct solution. So here is our equation, and we're going to plug in 3 for x. So I have 3 fourths times 3, and I'm going to write that as 3 over 1, okay? You don't have to do that. Minus 1 6. Always just work on one side at a time. When you're checking, you don't get to multiply both sides of an equation by something, because all you're doing is looking at one side at a time and simplifying. So this becomes 9 fourths minus 1 6. All right, now we have to subtract two fractions. And in order to subtract two fractions, you need a common denominator. So between 4 and 6, the least common denominator will be 12. So I'm going to multiply 9 fourths by 3 over 3, because that's like multiplying by 1, right? So that I have 12. And over here, I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2. So this gives me 27 twelfths minus 2 twelfths. So when you plug in 3 on the left side of the equation, you get 25 twelfths. It's reduced. It's an improper fraction. That's perfectly fine. All right, now we're going to plug in 3 for x on the other side of the equation. So we have 3 twelfths plus 11 sixths. Now, you could reduce this to 1 fourth, but you know what? <laughs> if you do reduce it to 1 fourth, you're going to have to go back and get a common denominator of 12. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that as 12 and realize that I can make this fraction have a denominator of 12 by multiplying by 2 over 2. If you reduce it, that's okay. You're just going to have to go back and multiply by 3 over 3 again. So we have 3 twelfths plus 22 twelfths. 
Now that you have a common denominator, you add the numerators, 25 twelfths, and then we compare sides. So we got the same number when we put in three, so yes siree, this is the correct answer. All right, I hope all this, all these videos helped you. Good idea to try all the problems again all on your own until they seem easy. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.